Uh, do you consider yourself Caribbean and why? Mm, yes, I definitely consider myself Caribbean uh, because I was born and raised here. Mm -hmm. And my whole family was also born and raised on Aruba. So um, it, we have a deep connection with the culture, also with the other islands, mm -hmm. um, music, f f festivals and such. So I would definitely consider myself Caribbean. The um, thing is, the Caribbean has different identities, different uh, mm -hmm. islands, they all have their own culture, or we have pretty much the same basic um, cultures, but Aruba, for example, is more, I find, more uh, uh, multilingual, but also it has more, many more identities than other uh, islands in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. so we oh. have a lot more different cultures on Aruba than, for example, Trinidad and Tobago. But what we have in common is our carnival. Mm -hmm. So most of the islands in the Caribbean, we all celebrate carnival. And we all have different festivals in carnival. And some of them overlap. Some of them are just um, just pertain to different uh, islands. So not all islands celebrate carnival in the same manner, for example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we also have a lot of Dutch culture, American culture. We celebrate Halloween. We really celebrate Halloween big mm -hmm. and Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. Thanksgiving for some odd reason. So we, the, the, from the Netherlands, they celebrate Sinterklaas, which is St. Nicholas and his oh. black beats. Mm -hmm. And... Recently, in the, in the over the, in recent years, it has gained, um, um, yeah, it has been exposed in the media in European countries, and especially because of the EU, that mm -hmm. it is a racist culture with racist uh, roots, mm -hmm. being black peats, being uh, slaves, uh, slaves for uh, the the white supremacy. Um, to Nicholas, play a YouTube where you can see how black, uh, how white people cover themselves in black paint, and go around in a way giving candies to kids, but sometimes also scaring kids. So kind of portraying this negative image for um, black people, for and black it's people. gained mm -hmm. um, attention by immigrants in the Netherlands. But we also celebrate it here in, on Aruba because we are part of the Netherlands, mm -hmm. and it is here but it's kind of the dutch christmas mm -hmm. instead of Saint santa claus they do saint nicholas mm -hmm. but we also celebrate santa claus so we celebrate both because of mm -hmm. the dutch influence and the american influence mm -hmm. yeah so the culture aspect like i said because of the uh hotel area because we have a big hotel area mm -hmm. uh, if you have to look at the islands it's a very small island mm -hmm. there's a lot of hotels and a lot of tourists and the hotels what they do is they try to bring as much american feeling to the island for the mm -hmm. American tourists. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And if I have to say, um, Aruba is more Americanized in the sense we have a lot of a lot more American tourists than we have Dutch tourists or um, well, Latino, yes, we do have a lot of tourists, but now a bit less due to the uh, crisis in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. But I would say Curacao, our neighboring island, is more Dutch. Mm -hmm. And Bonaire as well. They are more Dutch, but we are more uh, Americanized. And with that, I can also say that the other islands, they can speak better Dutch than we can, but oh, okay. we can speak better English than they. Oh, that's interesting. So from the ABC Islands. Um, so definitely food culture as well is quite Americanized. You can always find any fast food here that you can find in America as well. And more are also coming. So mm -hmm. other American chain uh, food restaurants are also mm -hmm. popping up. So a lot of Arubans um, eat there instead of cook. I don't know, okay. I can't speak for all households, but you do see it a lot more often. And that's also one of the reasons why obesity is also an issue here on Aruba at the moment. So I would say more Mexico and Latin America, mm -hmm. um, so South America. And that is mostly because of the telenovelas. Okay. So, um, but I have to say that is... I, I can't, this is my, just an observation in different households, but I have to say that is uh, diminishing a little bit. So I grew up, uh, well, the biggest example is I grew up with uh, my mom. She watches a lot of telenovelas, so I grew up watching a lot of telenovelas as well and speaking Spanish as well mm -hmm. when you reenact uh, scenes, for example. Mm -hmm. But my little sister, who was 10 years younger than me, did not. 
So mm-hmm. even though my mom was still watching telenovelas, my little sister did not watch it with her. So her Spanish is, well, quite non-existent. So she understands it, but she can't speak it. Mm-hmm. Well, I can do both. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And that would be beach. And so the typical beach where you have, we have, we call this uh, the Watapana tree or the Quihi tree. So there are two different trees. And they usually they are next to the ocean. Mm-hmm. You can find them next to the ocean. So the idea is a lot of Arubans, especially on Sundays or in the weekends, they would go to the beach, mm-hmm. um, rocky beach, not, not necessarily sandy beach. That's more for the tourists, but they're more mm-hmm. rocky beach. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they play domino. So it's, it's a game that as a family I grew up in. And that's one thing we would always play, on, and especially at every party. So you would start the party definitely with dancing, um, uh, to merengue, salsa, bachata. So a lot of our parties are dancing parties, eating and dancing. And at the end, as the children would go to sleep, the adults would play dominoes until 2 a.m., 3 a.m. in the morning. Um, so that's typical Aruban, I would say, that, that mm-hmm. the, the way we um, party. Uh, I speak four languages, definitely fluently, so Spanish, Papimento, Dutch, English. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've also learned French in school, so I can understand quite a bit of French. Mm-hmm. And oh. I cur- I'm currently learning uh, Japanese. My mother tongue is Papimento. Papimento. Is it necessary to learn Dutch in Aruba? It is a good question. Yes, for education, because it is a must, it is obligatory. Actually, the education is in Dutch. Mm-hmm. So from... Actually, from kindergarten already, you are taught Dutch. So how to count in Dutch, how to... The alphabet, the Dutch alphabet, which is quite similar to Aruban anyways, but you are taught Dutch words. Mm -hmm. And in primary school, it's all Dutch. So grammar, everything, you you never learn papimento. You always learn Dutch. Mm -hmm. Uh, And high school as well, our high school exams are in Dutch. And actually, they are the same Dutch exams that they use uh, in the Netherlands mm-hmm. to keep the level th- the same so that we can also go study in the Netherlands. So yes, Dutch is definitely important if you want to succeed in education. Mm-hmm. But if you are an immigrant and you're just looking for a job, mm-hmm. uh, depending on where you look for a job, it's not necessary at all. So if you're going in a tourism area, some hotels or some, depending on where you're going to work, so if uh-huh. it's a restaurant or a salesperson, sometimes English is just enough. English and Spanish is enough. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, or if you're going to do housekeeping, for example, you don't even need a lot of English. It's going to speak to a lot of tourists. So um, you can definitely survive on the island without knowing the Dutch. It's pretty. Pu- it's purely for education. Where, where you were in the school, how do you feel about learning all this language at the same time? So, growing up, I watched a lot of TV in Spanish and English, and never in Dutch, even though we do have Dutch channels as well, but that's very limited. Mm-hmm. Um, but English was my most uh, favorite language, so to say, next to Papimento, because Papimento, you just don't feel it because it's not, mm-hmm. not a foreign language. It's just your your mother tongue. Mm-hmm. But English is the one you we play most in. When we when I play with my cousins or we play Barbies or anything, we usually play uh, speaking English. Mm-hmm. And if I and that, that's with a group of friends that also watch a lot of English shows. But if I hang out with friends that watch a lot of Spanish shows, such as uh, I don't know if you know Somos Tu Yo or you know those type of uh, series, mm-hmm. um, we would then play in Spanish, play play speaking Spanish. But then Dutch is then just a, a school thing. We only, I only spoke Dutch when I was in school. And I barely mm-hmm. spoke Dutch because most of the teachers mm-hmm. who are not from the Netherlands, they usually speak Papimento to the students instead of Dutch. The thing is with Dutch, um, it's just something everyone should learn, but no one mm-hmm. understands why. My little sister, for example, is mm-hmm. completely in English, but not Spanish because she didn't have that uh, background, but mm-hmm. her Dutch is also quite limited in a sense. Okay. Um, but it was better than mine because I did, I brought more Dutch influence in my family, um, mm-hmm. being with my boyfriend and his family. So my little siblings had more Dutch exposure okay. than I did at their age. 
No, so just now, actually, with the situation with Papimento is they are introducing it in primary schools, mm -hmm. making it the language of instruction in primary schools. Mm -hmm. um, that 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 started this year oh, because okay. they did a test run with two schools and that was successful in the sense that they... Uh, so Papimento mm -hmm. has done a language of instructions uh, since prim the first grade of primary school. Mm -hmm. So that's when you're like, I think, six years old. Yeah. And in the second year, you start learning Dutch. And then the, in the fifth or in the fourth, you start learning English. And then you start learning Spanish. Um, okay. And that, that, that showed that the Dutch of the students or the languages of the students was better than uh, those in normal uh, primary education. We don't even have to um, focus as much on Dutch as we are now, but focus more on English. Mm -hmm. Because even in the Netherlands, the higher education, they are focusing more on English. So I think our high school should also change that and focus more on English and maybe less on Dutch. And all, I think that would also be more positive for the students because then because English is just more uh, dominant on our island than mm -hmm. Dutch. Mm, again, it depends on the generation. Like my my mother, my mother she listens to um, news in Papimento. Um, we have different newspapers. We have newspapers in Papimento, English, Dutch, and Spanish. So we have all the newspapers you can find from different languages. So people can just choose. Still, well, I mean, it would still be Papimento for the Arubans here. Mm -hmm. They would still go for the Aruban version of uh, news or mass media but and commercials. But um, the newer generation would definitely pick English as their sources for information. In my generation already, the input we get when growing up is kind of a mixed Papimento. So it's not pure Papiamento, you could say, because of all the influences from all the different languages. Mm -hmm. Papiamento has become not only just, it's not just a language, like a Papiamento language, but it's a mm -hmm. mix of different languages. And now because of the exposure to English media, especially, we use a lot of English when we speak Papiamento, okay. especially the younger generation. Mm -hmm. And the okay. older generation, you can say, say still speak a, a pure version of the Papimento, but uh, currently most most uh, people, most the young generation here, they use a lot of English in their Papimento while speaking. Mm -hmm. Our attitude towards Papimento, I would say, in general, is quite complex. Because while we mm -hmm. say it is our mother tongue, we should prioritize it above Dutch or other languages because it is our... Um, it's unique. I mean, it is unique in a sense. It's very uh, mixed, but and it's part of our identity of who we are. And if we lose that, we lose part of our identity. Mm -hmm. Definitely. However, they keep saying that because Papiamento can bring you far in life in the sense that it's only spoken on, on these three islands mm -hmm. and it can't bring you far in life education wise or work wise mm -hmm. or employment. So um, that's when English and Dutch Spanish really depends. Spanish is smaller than English and Dutch here on the island, but mm -hmm. that those two are more important to go far in life for education mm -hmm. and employment. Yeah, so while they say that we should learn Papimento because it's your mother tongue, mm -hmm. they keep saying you shouldn't prioritize it as much. Or the other languages, they still have more prestige on the island than Papimento. But then they say that you know we shouldn't have it like that. But then it's it's very complex. Mm -hmm. It's only be, it's complex because Papimento is a minority language in the world, and while Dutch mm -hmm. helps you go to the Netherlands, and English helps you actually in a global manner. Mm -hmm. uh, or the wanted signs, for example, mm -hmm. they all require you to at least at least speak Dutch and English. So sometimes Papimento isn't even on the list of languages that you mm -hmm. should know for the job. Uh -huh. So so sometimes you would find if you go to a restaurant, they would say, okay, we require you to at least speak Dutch, English, and Pimento. Others would find, or other other places you would find only English and Dutch, uh -huh. whereas other places you will find La uh, Spanish and Dutch and English. Other places you will find all four. So it really it uh -huh. really depends on the where where you're where you want to go in life as well, on which language should be a priority for yourself. And do you think Papiamento might disappear? Mm, it is a minority language in the world, of course, because mm -hmm. only three, three small islands mm -hmm. speak it, but it is the majority island on all three islands, mm -hmm. uh, which is why I don't think, I don't think it will disappear. Mm -hmm. um, only because we 
are pretty well what we are doing by introducing a lot of English or other languages in Papimento is pretty much enriching it. You our Papimento should also change and it has been changing um, every year mm-hmm. with new words and new phrases, for example. Well, that's yes, there's a big difference. Uh, like I can you can distinguish and in the Netherlands when I hear Papimento, you can definitely distinguish oh that person is from that island, that person is from that mm-hmm. island. Um, because in Curacao, they say that they sing Papiamento in the sense it sounds more like a, yeah. like they're singing. I don't know too, that much about the Papiamento and Bonaire, but it's pretty similar to both in a sense, or in, in between Curacao Papiamento and Aruben Papiamento. Mm-hmm. But the writing style is completely different. Yeah, so Curacao has phonological, okay. um, their orthography is phonological, so the way you, you speak it is the way you write it, with mm-hmm. the accents and everything. Ah, yeah, we, we use the word frei, mm-hmm. uh, which is negative on Aruba. Frei meaning um, to have sexual intercourse, in a sense. And on Curacao, it literally just means your partner. What about the government? What is the language that they use to communicate things in general, no? the whole island? Iceland. Writing... Writing used to be uh, completely in Dutch, mm-hmm. a change, I don't know in what year, to Dutch and English, so they would have documents in Dutch and English. Mm-hmm. Um, in the parliament, I believe they use Papimento for communication, mm-hmm. yes, definitely. But And for the um, for mass media, so to inform the um, uh-huh. population, it would be in Papimento. Um, and... And the Dutch would just be a written form to um, communicate to the others who don't speak Papimento. Mm, no, actually, I don't think so. Aside from education, I don't think the government is focusing on anything mm-hmm. related to the language. Mm-hmm. It, uh, it has actually only been giving um, focus or having... Uh, the focus has been on Papimento only in the recent years. Mm-hmm. So I think that's something that's still to be developed. I don't think there's much being done on Papimento, not in the university, for example. I think that's the next step, to bring Papimento to the university and give it a, a higher sort of, a type of higher education status, like it is in Curacao. Mm-hmm. So in Curacao, you can continue with Papimento in higher education, but mm-hmm. here on Aruba, you can't. Um, so the sense of belonging, to answer that first, is mm-hmm. that um, on the one hand, it, the Dutch culture did enrich our culture and again, our language, definitely. Mm-hmm. So it does have an, an, a unique role on Aruba. Mm-hmm. But the, to, to look at more social aspect of the Dutch influence on Aruba, is is that the Dutch um, the Dutch minority mm-hmm. would uh, take up higher position in jobs and mm-hmm. employment and in jobs and um, education and such as well, while Arubans would have to do work for them, mm-hmm. and that brought with it a lot of discrimination as well on both ends. So the, the Arubans mm-hmm. would have a negative uh, image of the Dutch, saying that they're just um, arrogant and. They're uh, too straightforward because that's what we do have of the Dutch. So they're too straightforward. While the uh, Arubans are more, in a way, friendly and tend to kind of say white lies to not hurt someone, while the Dutch would just say straightforwardly. Mm-hmm. But um, but definitely the idea of we think that the Dutch think they're superior to 